So back here at Utoxla, let's speak to the man of the moment. It is Ollie Murphy. And Ollie, you're very much bred into this game. Mum trains and dad is a bloodstock agent. So you've got the training side from mum. You've got dad f sort of funding the horses, bringing them in for you. So you've got a good start there straight away. Yeah, no, it's been a massive help. I, I couldn't have done anything without mum and dad. Um, I've come home to a, a lovely place in the heart of Warwickshire, which I'm very lucky to, to come back to. I can't imagine what what these lads that are paying rent in, in, in Newmarket and places like that, the pressure they're under. So I'm, uh, I'm very lucky in that aspect and John, I don't take that lightly, but uh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been magic. So how's it working with your mum though? Because you don't actually train from her yard, it's close to her yard, is that correct? Yeah, no, we're a hundred yards down the road from each other. Um, so yeah, we don't, we, we don't bump into each other. She's still got a few sprinters and whatnot. And, uh, Imagine she's asking for advice, isn't she? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's got plenty of pre-trainers now for, for Philip Hobbs and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, no, we still work together. I still get plenty of advice off her and dad, and I'm still, uh, I'm only three weeks into training. I'm still learning loads and, and trying to take as much advice off people as I possibly can. So your background, you, you've been out, obviously, we know, with Gordon Elliott. What was happening before that with you, though? I, before that, believe it or not, I was actually riding a few winners as an amateur. Um, I got heavy, and, and I'd actually spent a few years with, uh, well, a few summers with Gordon uh, originally, um, and I was then offered a, offered a good job back with Gordon and, and went over there and, uh, yeah, had a, most amazing four years and and learnt more in four years and I've learnt the whole of my life and um, yeah, no, I had a magic time over there I was associated with some fantastic horses hopefully picked hopefully picked up plenty of uh, plenty of good training methods and whatnot and uh, you know Gordon's been been unbelievable and, and he's the main part behind why I've started so well and for those of us who've been lucky enough to see you and Gordon together sort of thing out out working I mean it's clear you had a very good relationship you know effectively mates but working a relationship as well yeah, most definitely. We still speak most days. Um, if I've ever a query, I'll give them a ring. And still after uh, after working hours, we talk about things outside work. So, no, he's been he's been fantastic to me. Um, I had a brilliant four years there. And if I wasn't to go training, I'd be there for I'd be there for the foreseeable future anyway. And and Gordon started with a bit of a bang as well. Obviously, he had the Grand National winner very early on, and and things have really flowed since then. Did he kind of, did you ever sit down and say, you know, starting well is absolutely key. Whatever you do, start with a bang. I remember going into his kitchen, actually, and I, I promise you I was whimpering. My bottom, my bottom lip was going, telling him I was going to go home. And uh, it was about a fortnight, three weeks before Cheltenham. And uh, he just told me, go home and don't complicate things. And I'd have his full support. And obviously, mum and dad have been great as well. And I've had a, had a lot of support of fund syndicates and whatnot. But no, it was a case of going home. Don't complicate things. I'd been there four years. and. And, uh, and I think that the best thing behind Gordon's success, he doesn't complicate things. He's good staff, very straightforward system. Um, and I've just tried to come home and do the same. And listen, so far it's working, Matt, but I, I know I'm a long way off being as successful as any of these good trainers in England, but I'm young and hungry and I have a young, hungry team behind me and I, I want to be the best. And I'll just try and keep going the way I'm going and working hard. So. But we know, I mean, Gordon is as close to being a champion trainer as, as you're going to get without being champion trainer. I mean, he was so close last season. And, and we know from the skeletons that, you know, obviously Dan and Harry have been connected with, with Paul Nichols, who's been champion over here. If you learn from the best, there's a good chance you can become close to the best yourself. And Gordon Elliott came from Martin Pipe, effectively, and he will have learned so much from Martin. Do you, do you feel you've fed off that? I hope so. Um... I'd, as I said, I had four fantastic years there. I tried to keep. You've, you've kind of said, you know, you've learned that he kept it simple, but without giving secrets away, what, there must be things you pick up along the way that you think, hold on, I've not seen someone do it like that before. Keep yourself in the best company and your horse in the worst. Yes. Don't run your horse in race they can't win. Um, the mistake I've made over the years. <laughs> Gordon told me, he said, don't be going to Newbury on a Saturday and going and eating a prawn cocktail. Go to Bang and try and train a winner. And I think that's as best bit of advice you can give someone. Um, so, yeah. the, the, the gathering of horses, has that been something that's been in your mind for some time? I mean, these winners haven't just come out of nowhere. Obviously, you've been thinking about this for some, some, some months, I imagine. Yeah, no, I have. I, it was one of those. It was either come back and, and try and get going through the summer or get over in Honky Dory and start from scratch in September or October. But I got together a few horses off the flat and whatnot and, and bought a few lowly graded handicappers from, from Doncaster and Ascot for very cheap money. I, I haven't got a horse in the yard that costs less, costs more than 10 grand. Um, so we've been we've been buying basement stuff, but just we've been trying to do things rightly and uh, run horse in the right race and, and putting the right lads up on top. And I've, uh, as I said before, I've a good team behind me at home, some very good riders, and, and I think that's very important. How as many well. horses do you say? 
15, or 15 fit and ready to run. Um, I, I, I've just bought about the same in for the winter. Um, so we've just under 30 riding out, but I've, 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 I, do you know, I haven't got 15 to run. Um, I had a horse claimed off me last week, so yeah, we've, I think we've 14 to run. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a good size operation to start with, but as you know, it is a numbers game. Gordon has shown you it's a numbers game. The more you have to run in, in one race, let alone in a, in a car, the more chance you've got of winning. Has the phone been relatively red hot when once, because I was saying earlier, you know, if I was a guy thinking about having a horse now, Ollie Murphy would almost be top of my hold on. This guy could be a sensation. I've got to have a horse with him. Is the phone ringing? Uh, so, so, so. Um, a few syndicates have been filled up and whatnot, and the, the racing club's going well, but uh, as everyone says, you've always room for more and whatnot, and we're, uh, we're a young, hungry operation, and, uh, you yeah, know, we're looking to move forward, and, and all's going well so far. And obviously, when the season starts properly, so to speak, um, you'll be conscious that some of these horses might struggle at that time. How important is it to get sort of a big name horse into the yard or something that you can run in graded races and how are you going to manage to do that? I suppose keep trying to train winners Matt at this, at this low level and, and, and hopefully the big lads will come calling. Um, I'm very much someone who believes that you only deserve a good horse if you train winners. Um, Gordon proved that. John Gordon wasn't giving anything on a plate. He started from scratch and, and look where he is now so work hard, keep training winners, run your horse in the right races and, and hopefully a nice horse will come along somewhere. No, no McManus phone calls yet? Jiggins Town suddenly coming to England or anything like that? No, not as yet, but we'll, uh, we'll keep doing what we're doing and, and, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get a nice horse from the yard at some point. And you've got a runner at Newcastle tomorrow who should take all the beating? Yeah, he ran well the first end market race and having his first run the handicap. He's a big, raw old bugger, so he is. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's drawn one. Jamie Spencer rides. He looks like he's got a is nice... Is he a hold-up horse? Uh, no, we'll, <laughs> ride, we'll, we'll, we'll ride him halfway and listen to big, long straight and, uh, yeah, hopefully he'll go very close. Well, exciting times, Ollie. You've obviously made a tremendous start. Let's hope it continues. Thanks very much, Matt. Thank you.